Well, it's been quite the week on social media. If you live in the Northeast, odds are you started your week wet. My parents, for example, live in Plymouth, Massachusetts. They saw six inches worth of rain. And amid the downpours, I came across this gem circulating social media. How much snow would this have been, quote, if the atmospheric setup was different? What a dumb thing to say. If the atmospheric setup had been different, it would have been a different atmospheric setup. If the weather was different, then yeah, sure, perhaps it could have snowed if it was 30 degrees colder, but it's not. Which is why this comparison makes absolutely no sense. You see, warmer air holds exponentially more water than cold air. We call this the clausius clapeyron relationship. Here's the equation. Now, at the time of the storm, temperatures were in the upper 50s to around 60 degrees. At 58 degrees, the air can hold 4.3 times more water than when the temperature is freezing. That's why this comparison makes absolutely no sense. So this comparison is like saying, wow, if I was on the moon right now, I'd weigh only 21.6 pounds. But that doesn't mean it's practical for Weight Watchers to open up a lunar location. I have no idea how you'd actually get there either, presumably by taking Rainbow Road. And speaking of rainbows, this made the rounds on Facebook as well this week. A shot of viral iridescent clouds and an explanation of what iridescence is. Except the photo's fake. Of course, that didn't stop it from going viral or a meteorologist from posting it. Here are some actual photos of iridescence that I've taken. And obviously there are pretty colors and naturally they're going to do well on social media. But this photo is obviously fake. It's clearly AI generated if the power poles didn't give it away. Now, we're at the point where it's easy to fall for AI content, but where we are now, we need to start assuming everything is fake or AI unless proven true. Now, the worrisome part is that this was posted by a broadcast meteorologist. It's our job as meteorologists, as scientists, to do the forensic analysis, the forensic meteorology, and figure out whether or not what's shown in a photo is actually physically possible. Actual cloud iridescence is caused by little teeny water droplets or very small ice particles, basically scattering, bending, refracting light to cause a sort of wonky, colorful interference pattern of sorts. It's almost like an oil slick. You commonly get iridescence with pileus clouds or little cat clouds that form when a cloud's updraft punches through a stable layer. You get like a little band of water droplets and a cool little cloud. There's a very famous example of an iridescent pileus cloud over Haikou, China back in 2022. The other stipulation is that iridescence only occurs with clouds close by the sun in the sky, about 10 degrees apart. So they have to be pretty close. In our imaginary AI photo, the sun is supposedly setting, so it's nowhere near the cloud, notwithstanding the fact that at that time of day, you wouldn't be able to see the purples, the blues, the greens, because they'd be scattered away. Only the reds and the oranges would make it through the longer wavelengths in the atmosphere because it's sunset. It's the same reason why rainbows are only orange or red if it's close to sunrise or sunset. The other colors, the shorter wavelengths, get scattered away, the higher frequencies. They're just Kapoof. Now, most of the time when we see colors in the sky, it's from either a sun halo caused by slightly larger ice crystals about 22 degrees out from the sun or an arc, which forms somewhat similarly. The role of us as meteorologists is to do the homework and use our knowledge to figure out whether or not a photo is legitimate. And speaking of illegitimate photos, a lot of us are aware of what happened in Alaska this past weekend. Several remote rural villages were inundated with crippling storm surge as winds gusted to 100 miles per hour out of the south with the remnants of Typhoon Haolong blowing through. About 50 people were rescued, one has been confirmed dead so far, and the damage was immense. Now, admittedly, the mainstream news was a little bit slow to cover this, but the most popular photos on social media are all AI generated, and some have been viewed tens of millions of times, and they're bogus. Uh, I like this one, for example. Not only is it obviously fake, but it says, guasts of 78 miles per hour. Yes, guasts, a new weather term for you to learn. On Facebook, I pointed out that one of these photos was AI generated, and I was met with dozens of people telling me I didn't know what I was talking about, that I'm a lousy scientist, that I'm uninformed. Now, yes, what happened was a tragedy. And unfortunately for bad actors, tragedies are highly profitable. The same people who think the mainstream media is evil somehow believe that an anonymous Facebook account entitled Res R Us with the Toys R Us logo is somehow a bastion of truth providing something more. Now notice the 16,000 shares on the bottom right of this account's image. 
They likely made between one and $3,000 with this bogus photo. Another poster of the same image got about 85,000 shares. That's roughly $5,000 of monetization on Facebook right there. Now, how do I know that account is using AI? Well, here's another photo they posted earlier this week depicting their winter forecast. For starters, Florida's going to be apparently cold and snowy, just like Washington State, and the folks in red are either going to be dry and warm or, quote, a la a nina infuncy. Gotta be aware of those uh, infuncies. That's how they get you. I think my favorite part is how the AI couldn't even get the tilde on the second N in nina. <laughs> Look at this like sad squiggle. I think it's an eyebrow. <laughs> One eyebrow. <laughs> This is what the same page posted about the Outer Banks seeing coastal splash over and flooding on Monday. And this one is my favorite. Coastal flooding. Pelucci watch. Nobody likes a wet Pelucci. Now to those of you on Facebook sharing these photos and videos, bad actors are profiting off your sympathy, off your well wishes, and off you sharing that content. They're making money off your fears and your inability to discern fact from fantasy. This happened in droves during Helene or the Texas floods back in July. And let me tell you, in the next 18 months, AI is going to get so good that most of us will not be able to figure out reality versus fiction. Fear is so easy to monetize, so is sympathy. And as fake content floods social media, people can genuinely generate entire revenues and entire incomes just by circulating false images. In a sense, you're being catfished. Now, speaking of bogus stuff that irritates me, a well-known weather vendor over the weekend posted these maps and graphics about a, quote, tropical wind storm that was going to impact the eastern seaboard. They posted these graphics, tropical total rainfall, tropical wind gusts, and whatever the hell this is, a tropical eye path. Now, there is one small issue here. It wasn't tropical! To the point that the National Weather Service and National Hurricane Center literally chimed in to say, quote, not tropical. Now, we all knew it wasn't tropical. It had fronts. Tropical systems don't have fronts. It was deriving energy from the jet stream and clashing air masses. Tropical cyclones don't do that. Its warm core, the blob of warmth at the middle, was very shallow, not deep enough to be a tropical cyclone. And it was pretty asymmetric, much more lopsided than a tropical or even subtropical cyclone would be. The system was patently non-tropical, start to finish, but that didn't stop the popular weather vendor from intentionally, willfully, and deliberately misleading the public. And if you think this company's meteorological BS isn't having a negative impact on the public, this is an actual message I got on Hinge this week. Now, this is not the first time this has happened. Last September, for example, the same weather vendor bragged they were the first to classify a tropical cyclone that the National Hurricane Center said was never tropical. Last November, the same group called for a potentially major hurricane to impact Florida. and It wound up being a weak tropical storm that hit the Yucatan Peninsula instead. Whoops. And a month in advance of the April 8th, 2024 solar eclipse, they published a questionable cloud forecast that was skillfully wrong. That's why real scientists don't publish cloud forecasts a month in advance. So all told, it's been a, a wild week on social media in the weather world. It's 2025. Clicks equal cash. Every time you stop scrolling, you share a post, or you click a link, you should ask yourself, why did you do that? What factors influenced you to do so? And ultimately, who is profiting? Because somebody is. Is it an anonymous account profiting off fake weather photos? Is it a major weather vendor stoking your fears through hype and or scientifically indefensible forecast products? Or is it a rando with an internet connection who knows diddly squat about the atmosphere? The internet is a weird place these days. And much like poorly behaved iPad children at the Olive Garden, everybody is making noise, they're being loud and competing for your attention. Just remember, your attention is a valuable resource, both emotionally and unfortunately financially. Guard it, protect it, and be judicious with who you give it to. On my radar, senior meteorologist Matthew Capucci, we'll never BS you because we're better than that. Follow my radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download MyRadar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, and Windows.